Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome on this beautiful Sunday uh, morning. So if you would please rise and worship with us. Our rock, the only solid ground. The nations rise and fall. Kingdoms once strong, now shaken. We trust forever in your name. The name of Jesus. We trust the name of Jesus. the only king forever almighty god we lift you higher you are the only king forever forevermore you are victorious you are the only king forever almighty god we lift you higher you are the only king forever forevermore you are victorious
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. And when the darkness closes in, Lord, still I Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to LifeSpring Community Church. My name is Steve Love. I am a member here at LifeSpring, and whether you are a guest or regular attender, or in person or in online, we're delighted to have you worshiping with us this morning. Just a couple of things to share with you. Uh, following the service today, we'll be hosting a Meet Life Spring uh, lunch uh, in uh, K2 room. Um, Meet Life Spring is an informal luncheon where you will have the opportunity uh, to share unhurried time visiting with Pastor Cabot and, uh, and others with, uh, with Life Spring, other folks with Life Spring. Uh, you will also have the opportunity to learn the visions and values of the church and what next steps might look like for you to enter into the Life Spring Church. Immediately after uh, church next week, we will have our annual church picnic. Uh, and at, it's at the home of Jeff and Ketty Vanderlip, just down the street on Wynn Road. Uh, there will be a pig roast this year, and grilled hot dogs and hamburgers will also be available. So we ask you that you bring a uh, side dish and dessert to share. Uh, and if you have any questions or any, anything else, uh, you're more than welcome to call the office here at the church for any questions. I know that some of you might be um, wanting prayer uh, or need someone to talk to about spiritual matters or things that you're struggling with. Uh, you might want to be baptized or join one of our um, in-persons or online groups. To, uh, to do any of these things, just click on the Connect card uh, button on our website at lifespringesc.org or fill out uh, one of the Connect cards at the bottom of your bulletin. Um, giving is also a part of the worship, a part of our worship, so uh, if you can do uh, this, and we can do this in many different ways and uh, different options here, you could do it on our website. There's a tab that just says Give. Uh, you can also put your offering in the box. It's in the back of the church, um, along with your Connect card, and you can also give through the Church Center app or text it if that's what your thing is. 
All right, so please turn with me uh, to uh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, verses 13, um, I'm sorry, verses 5 through 13 for our, for our, for our scripture reading. You can also follow it along on the screen. <clears throat> and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what you've done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you even ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you, Steve. Let's stand again and join in singing, Yet Not I, But Through Christ. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. It has been paid For Jesus bled And suffered for my pardon And he was raised To overthrow the grave To this I hold My sin has been defeated Jesus now and ever is my plea Oh, the chains are released, I can sing, I am free, and not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said, that he will bring me home and day by day i know he will renew me until
until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat. Still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. For our second scripture reading, we are in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 18 through 20. 
and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given me so that I will be fearlessly made known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it, declare it fearlessly as I should. May God bless the reading of the word. Thank you, Megan. Well, would you please uh, bow your heads with me? Father God, every good and perfect gift is from above. Coming down from you, our Father of heavenly lights, you do not change like shifting shadows. And you, O oh Lord, are the source of all blessing. There is no gift that any of us have received that did not first come from your hand. And so because of that, we want to thank you with grateful hearts and trust you for the future. Thank you, God, for the gift of our own lives, of our friends, our families, the clothes we wear, the food we eat, the air we breathe. Thank you, God, for our community. Thank you for the hope that we have through your Son, Jesus Christ. Why should we worry or have anxious thoughts when we have such a Father in heaven who loves us? We ask that you grow our joy, our gratitude, and help us to trust you with all that we are, all that we own, all that we think and feel. Increase our trust, expand our faith. And God, we know one of the pillars of trust is good communication. Help us to be faithful in communicating with you through prayer. Lord Jesus, as your disciples asked long ago, we ask of you, teach us to pray. Help us to pray for our own hearts, for those within our family, within the church, our surrounding community. We also pray that through your spirit, words would be given to us, that we would fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, and that through the gospel, that your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray this in the powerful and precious name of Jesus. Amen. Have you had a chance to see the uh, walls go up this week? Because I know some of you kind of stopped by and taken a look there, and, and uh, that, that video sort of made it look like uh, a, a toy building project. But some of those panels being moved are about 28,000 pounds, so it's, uh, it's incredible that it, it, it's gone up so quickly. Um, and we are excited to see the building uh, be constructed. Um, this is the first phase in, in LifeSpring's uh, plan to build a place to gather to bless the, the families, neighborhoods, and, and uh, people of, of our area, the uh, greater Richmond Spring Grove area and surrounding areas. Um, the first phase of this 21-acre pro project is the church building. We plan to build a playground and uh, extend the church and have a community center and some other buildings uh, on there. Um, but why would we want to build a, a, a place like this? Uh, why not just build a church? Um, and, and the answer is that we, we want the church to be the heartbeat of the community. We want uh, Christians not to be a, a separate sect outside of that, but we want to be wholly integrated, and we want to, um, to be engaged with our neighbors and the community. Um, and the question we need to ask ourselves as we're constructing uh, this building 
is that if we want to bless the community, aren't there some other things that we need to prepare in addition to the building site itself? Um, we said that LifeSpring is building a place to gather to bless the neighborhood schools and families in Richmond, Spring Grove, surrounding community. What does it mean to bless? Uh, and that's what we're going to be spending some time on over the next five weeks. What does it mean to bless the community? Um, on, a, uh, on a side note, uh, some of you might be wondering, well, whatever happened to the Hebrew series? We haven't finished. And I want you to know we will get, we will get back to Hebrews. And, uh, and, and the reason we're taking a break in the middle of it isn't because uh, that book isn't important. It's, it's a fantastic book. I look forward to getting back into it. But I believe this is a timely series. As, as the walls are going up, we want some walls to come down in our hearts in regard to the community. We, wanna, uh, we want to be engaged with what God is doing in our lives, and so we're, gonna, we're going to take some time to, to work on that together. Now, BLESS is, a, is an acronym, and we'll be, we'll be talking about this B-L-E-S-S, um, and, uh, and I'll, I'll talk about what it stands for in just a minute, minute but I want us to remember where the source of all blessing comes from. Uh, the, the, uh, I, you know, sometimes when you don't know what to pray, you can start with Scripture. It's a great place to start, and so I started our prayer off like that earlier. James 1, 16 through 17, Do not be deceived, dear brothers and sisters. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father, the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. So God is the source of all blessing, and God blesses us with good and perfect gifts. Uh, God helps us, strengthens us, protects us. Uh, blessings he bestows, we bless God back by praising him and thanking him. We don't add anything to God, but we praise him and thank him for who he is and for the blessings he has showered upon us in our lives. But we are also called to bless other people. And so when we bless other people, we act as God's agents and ambassadors of heaven in the lives of other people. Some people, it's either easier to bless than others. Um, but we're going, to, uh, we're going to work through this acronym over the next five weeks and systematically talk about how we might be able to bless our friends and family and neighbors and, and coworkers and everyone around us so let me just ask you this question. Are you ready to bless? My confidence level is very low. <laughs> All right. If you guys are a bunch of soldiers and you're going to head out of here and there are the enemies out there and I said, uh, are you ready? And they went, yeah. All right. Let, let's try this one more time. Are you ready to bless? Yes. All right. I'm, I'm slightly more encouraged. All right. So um, the bless stands for begin with prayer. That's the B. Uh, the L is to listen. So I want to listen to God. I want to listen to other people. Uh, the E is eat, and not just uh, eat by yourself, but eat together. And the S is serve, and the second S is to share a story. So today we are on the B of bless, and that's to begin with prayer. So uh, let's start with this, and this is not to invoke guilt or anything like that, but if you were to uh, rate your prayer life on a scale of one to five, five being the highest and one being the lowest, where would it land right now? Now, I know some of you are pretty close to that five mark. Some of you are prayer warriors here, and others might be thinking, eh, I wish you hadn't asked that question. Um, honestly, self-assess, you don't need to share this or anything, but just think about that. How is your prayer life? Because it's sort of like, you know, have you ever gotten one of those things in the, uh, in the mail? You get a package, and it, and, it, and it comes, some assembly required, and you look like there's all these different pieces, and this little piece of paper flutters out and says, start here. And you read that thing, because you, you want to know, where do I start with this? Um, you might not read the rest of the instructions, but you know where to start. And start here, and blessing, is begin with prayer. We need to begin with that communication with God, because God is the source of all blessing. And so uh, we're going to talk about how to pray uh, from the Lord's Prayer in the passage that you heard read earlier. That's Matthew uh, 6, 5 through 13. But first, I want to speak on why we would want to pray. Because if there's no motivation to pray, it really doesn't help to tell 
us how we should pray. And so uh, the second reading from Ephesians 6, uh, 18 through 20, were the words of the Apostle Paul asking for prayer for himself. He said, pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Pray for everybody. But pray in this way, especially for me, that whenever I speak, the words might be given so that I might fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. If everyone... If ever there was someone who declared the gospel fearlessly, it was the Apostle Paul. Pray with all sorts of prayers, said Paul. Uh, in Matthew 9, 37 through 38, Jesus told his disciples they should pray, that the harvest is plentiful, the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Um, evangelistic prayers, prayers that... Uh, and. And I think John Piper said something that was very helpful. He said, you know, um, missions is not the goal of the church. It's not the goal of the church to go share the gospel. It's not the goal of the church to go to Africa and do that or Asia and do that or across the street and do that. The goal, our goal, is to worship God with everything that we are and everything that we have. And the reason missions exist is because worship does not. We want everyone to be in the state they were designed to be with their hearts oriented towards God, the reason Jesus came and died, the reason why we would be sent anywhere, uh, is because worship doesn't exist. And so, why don't we pray like that? Um, Dave and John Ferguson suggested three reasons we might not pray, and, and here they are. Some of us think that we don't know how to pray, we're too busy to pray. We don't believe it works. Now, I, I think all three of those are, are uh, valid. I think there's something underlying all of those as well. But um, some of us don't think we know how to pray. Uh, we feel uncomfortable praying in front of others. Or, uh, or I've heard uh, in, in men's groups many times uh, the, the husband doesn't feel comfortable praying in front of his wife because he feels like the wife's prayers are better than his. But as we'll learn from the Lord's Prayer, it's not about these fancy prayers. It's not about the, the, uh, uh, the package. It's about the heartfelt communication to God. That's all it is. Prayer is talking to God and listening to him. It's communication with God. And in communicating with God, we learn better what he desires of us. We learn to worship him more. It impacts our lives. It makes a difference on, on what we pray for, but it also makes a difference on us personally. And some of us say we're too busy to pray. <laughs> Can you imagine? I'm too busy for you, God. And God says, I'm too busy for you too. Uh, you know, we, we, really, we really need to make, uh, if, if we believe that God is important in our lives, and we believe, that, um, and we believe in this Christ-following stuff, then if we're going to schedule anything, we should schedule this into our lives. And I know that sometimes we don't schedule prayer because it's like exercise. I don't have time for that exercise thing because I know it's a little painful. And sometimes it is a little painful at first. Sometimes it does take, you have to get the bugs out and the cobwebs off and everything. And you have to push through it in order to get to that next thing. It's a discipline. Prayer is a discipline. But we're never too busy for it. We just make excuses to be... Uh, and we don't believe it works. Well, sometimes we don't believe it works. Uh, this prayer hasn't been answered, that prayer hasn't been answered, or God's not listening, or whatever. But, uh, but, uh, but none of that's true either. And I personally, this last year, have had many prayers answered, and prayers I sort of half believed myself as I prayed them, I've seen those answered as well. And I know that God is listening to us, and sometimes he answers us with a no, and that's okay too. But clearly, God hears and answers prayer. But I think I said there's an underlying reason why we don't pray. I don't think any of those is the main reason we don't pray for other people. I think the reason why we don't pray for other people is because we don't love them. We don't care enough about them to pray for them. Our hearts aren't in a position to pray for them. We're not motivated. And let's face it, not every neighbor around us is easy to get along with. Some of them aren't. 
Some of them are difficult. And yet we're called to pray for them. When we pray for another person, we're praying God's will to be done in their lives. We're praying for blessing upon them, including God's favor and help and strength and protection. And it's hard to pray a blessing, either because of apathy or active dislike. But Jesus told us this, if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Not even the tax collector, or not even the tax collectors doing that, Matthew 5, 46. And so um, our, our heartfelt motivation really needs to be love. And you say, well, I can't really manufacture love for my neighbor. Well, you know, there's two things that work. One is uh, we can try to love our neighbor, and the other one is we can pray for our neighbor when we don't love them. We can't really engage with our neighbor and bless them actively if we don't love them, but we can certainly pray for them when we don't actively love them. And in praying for our neighbor, oftentimes God works on our heart and makes a change so that we will love them more. We'll realize God cares about this bonehead. I don't know why. I don't, I don't know why God cares about this really rotten neighbor that I have right now, but he does, and I'm going to pray for him or her or their family. Well, I want to uh, mention one other prayer as, as motivation for us, and this is Jesus' high priestly prayer in John 17. Um, I'm just going to read 15 through 20. Um, Jesus prayed, My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is the truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For, I, for them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. So Jesus prayed for his disciples to be sanctified. That just means that they um, are going to grow more perfectly to be the, the, the people that God designed them to be. But Jesus also prayed for his disciples to be sent. They want to be sanctified and sent. And the disciples, uh, when they share the message of Jesus, Jesus has already prayed for the people who will hear it. Jesus prayed those prayers. One important prayer I need to pray for myself, and, and you might need to pray this too, is that I will have love and compassion upon those in our community, um, even those who've wronged me. Uh, I need to pray that my heart will not be apathetic or uncaring, that I won't have an active dislike towards people who have wronged me, that I will love them, even if they're not going to love me back. I had a friend uh, that used to have on his uh, monitor, uh, at his computer, uh, it would come up with a, a regular occurrence at certain intervals, pray now, pray hard. And sometimes we need to, to, to have a reminder to pray, to pray now and to pray hard and to pray for our community. The first part of the Lord's Prayer is when you pray. Jesus is assuming that we will, all Christ followers, all people who are part of the kingdom of God are called to pray. Let's talk about how. Now, I, I know that some of us, uh, when, we, when we pray, uh, we get tired of hearing even ourselves pray because prayer has become rote or it's become a laundry list of, of petitions to God and it becomes dry and weary like that. And sometimes it's helpful to have a structure or a framework in mind that we can work through. And the Lord's Prayer is one of those structures or frameworks. And many more liturgical churches, the Lord's Prayer will be recited every single Sunday. And I don't think that that's a bad thing to do, but I don't think it's its purpose either. I think the Lord's Prayer is a structure for us to have in mind when we pray so we don't get stuck in that laundry list, so we don't get stuck in that dry sort of prayer, that we can look at this model and say, okay, how can this inform my prayer life? So we're going to start out with two warnings that are offered during this time. Uh, the first, um, so we have the warnings in, uh, in 6, 5 through 8. The, the, uh, the first warning is, uh, is about the, uh, 
Let's go ahead and move it on to this next one here. There we go. Uh, the first warning is uh, Matthew uh, 6, 5 through 6, and is about uh, not praying for performance. Now, this one may feel like a little bit of a mess for us because I don't know that any of us are praying out loud in order to be seen. In fact, many times we're not willing to pray out loud in order to be seen. We just want to hide in a little hole when it comes to our faith because of the way the culture is around us. But in the context of what Jesus was in, uh, it was like a big deal. An important person would, would pray in front of others. So um, he said, don't play at praying. Do not be like the hypocrites. The word hypocrite literally means actors. Don't be like the actors, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street and the corners to be seen by others, but truly I tell you they have received their reward in full. So these are usually religious leaders who are praying big, important prayers. They've got their robes on, the whole deal, and they're praying in public. Is Jesus against praying in public? Anybody? Yeah, he's not against praying in public. In fact, he's for praying in public. He prayed in public himself and other people uh, within Scripture prayed in public. He's not saying that. What he's saying is, I believe, don't play at praying. Don't be a pretender. And uh, this also goes for if you're in a group of people and everybody's praying and you start uh, thinking about what you're going to pray for as someone else is praying. Ever gotten caught in that? You're, you're trying to formulate what you're going to say? You're not listening to anybody else? And no. You can, I mean, maybe God will bring something to mind during that time, that's fine, but we need to actively be engaged with the other people who are praying as well. We don't pray for the sake of other people, we pray before God. And that's why he says, when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Not many houses in Jesus' time had inner rooms, private places to go and pray, prayer closets. But what Jesus is saying is, uh, Jesus himself went to the wilderness to pray. He had an active prayer life that was personal and intimate with God and had nothing to do with anybody else. And that was the, the source and the root of his other prayer, his public prayer, where things overflowed into, into other people's lives. And what Jesus is saying here is don't play at praying. Have an active prayer communication with God, an active, intimate relationship with God. You may say these rote prayers again and again and again. You may have your laundry list, but don't do that. Have an active, intimate relationship with God. That leads us to the next point here. The second warning is don't babble. If we can, don't, uh, don't prayer babble. Don't heap up words, it says in, in uh, some translations. Um, verse 7, and when you pray, do not keep babbling like the pagans, those who are not loving God, those who are not following Jesus. Don't keep saying things over and over again, expecting to get something because you keep on repeating yourself. They think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Go into the secret room, your Father who sees everything in secret, sees what you're saying to him. We don't need to shout it to the sky, and we could. I've shouted out prayers before. But if we think it in our heads, if we mutter it with our mouth, God can still hear that prayer. And don't keep on repeating the same words over and over again, unless, you know, there, there have been times even uh, in, in Scripture where we see, you know, people just crying out to God. That's good and okay. But we don't just keep saying the same thing over and over again because maybe God hasn't heard us. We just need to actively trust him in it. All right, so those are two things not to do as we start out. Here are five categories that we can use to inform our prayer life. Um, the first, um, Jesus says, this is how you should pray then in, in verse 9. Um, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. I doubt that any of us, when we hear the word Father, 
are, uh, are scandalized or impacted very much at all. But to an original reader, listener, uh, the word father in regard to God would be a big deal. To have that sort of intimacy with the creator of the universe, with, to, with God himself, that we could call him father is only possible because of what Jesus did for us. That God is very close to us. We can call him father. We can call him daddy. We can trust him. But he is in heaven, and we need to pray for his name to be hallowed. What does it mean for God's name to be hallowed? Well, hallowed is holy. Do we need to pray for God's name to be holy? Is it not holy already? And there, that's this where that concept of blessing comes from. That God is the source of all blessing, and we, when we bless God, praise him and thank him. And our role as creatures that God's created is to declare God's name as holy, as hallowed. Now, if you were to have an insurance policy on anything, uh, usually they have a section that talks about acts of God. And by acts of God, they mean earthquakes, tornadoes, floods, all these bad things that get to happen. How come God always gets to sign those things and never the good things? I don't get it. God's name is hallowed. God is holy. We want to uplift God's name before other people. Are we ashamed of it? We want to lift up God's name. And we also need to pray for the kingdom. Does anybody remember Jesus' first um, message that he preached? It's pretty short. Anybody? It starts with repent. And it says, for the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand because Jesus was there. The kingdom of God was invading the earth through the person of Jesus Christ. And here, Jesus says, pray for the kingdom of God on earth. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will be done here on earth. What is God's will for everyone here on earth? It's to worship. It's to have our lives operating according to design, for us to be banging on all cylinders, for us to be in the, in the exact spot that we're supposed to be, the exact way he designed us to be, having a complete joy, but it can only happen when we worship God properly. And that's God's will for us. And that's God's kingdom here on earth. And how does God's kingdom get implemented? Jesus ascended into heaven. The Holy Spirit came down, rested on believers. And Jesus said, you will have power. You're going to have power through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's going to come upon you with power. So you can be my witnesses in Spring Grove, in Chicago, in Illinois, to the ends of the earth. It wasn't exactly that, but it's close. And we are meant to fulfill God's mission here on earth. That's why Jesus is praying for his disciples to be sanctified and sent. He's praying for those whom his disciples will speak to, that they will receive, that they will become disciples, that they will become sanctified and sent and so forth. God's kingdom come. His will be done. Are we praying for that actively? This should inform our prayer life. First, we want to hold up God's name as holy. Second, we want God's kingdom to come here on earth so that everyone will revere him as holy. What's third? Give us today our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. I don't think Jesus is just talking about a loaf of bread here. When Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, the, Satan told him, turn the stone of the loaf of bread if you're truly the Son of God. And Jesus said, no, because man does not live by bread alone, but by every word. Every word that proceeds from God. And so what we're talking about is what we need here physically, of course, 
Uh, but we're also talking about what we need spiritually. In fact, we're talking about everything that we need, every blessing that we need. We're praying for God to provide for today's blessing today. Are we praying for tomorrow's blessing today? No. Today's blessing today. What do we need today? What do we need at the right time? And what God is, or, or what Jesus is telling us here is to pray that God will provide for our daily needs in every way. And I think that could also mean when we're speaking to other people about the kingdom of God. How much fear do some of us have when we go to speak with someone about the kingdom of God and the holiness of God's name? They're trashing God's name. They don't believe in the kingdom of God. And where are we going to get the words? Paul says, I know where to get the words. Pray for me that I'll fearlessly declare the kingdom. Give me the words, God. Give me the power. Give me the Holy Spirit in order for me to be able to do that. Give me my daily bread. Sanctify me, the, thing I, the things I need to grow more like you. Provide those things. And of course, I need food. I need a place to live. I need you know, whatever those things are. But let those only be a portion of the daily bread we pray for. Let's have a, the full scale, the feast of bread that God wants to give us every day. All right, number four. And forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors. I don't know if you've ever been in debt to a place where you can't get it wiped out. The credit card companies have a pretty good line on that. You know, if you you get one for like, they'll give you a low interest rate, like you get 7% or something like that, you get one of those things. If you miss one payment, it's up like 28.99%. And if you start doing the math on how quickly that thing rolls out of control, you're basically, they've got you flat on your back and you can't do anything, right? You're, you're dead meat because they own your life. And what if they've done that and you're just like, okay, here, just take my stuff. You guys own it already. And what if they said, no, we're going to wipe it out. You don't owe us anything. You're good. Move on. And, and that's what God does for us. That clean through Jesus all of our sins, all of our debts, all of, all, everything we've done wrong against God, against other people who are nailed to the cross, and, and they are no more. But, as Christ followers, we are also called to do that towards others, that clean. So, somebody owes us all that money. Now, we're not just talking about money here, because... Money may be a little easier than some of the other things they owe us. What about somebody who has really wronged us? Somebody who has done something to us that we're really struggling to forgive them for. We can't let go of it. It's an impediment between us and them. Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a family member. And how in the world can we pray for God's blessing upon that person unless we've first forgiven them? We can't. We can't bless them. Now, I'm not for a minute saying that, you know, some of us are, have been put in dangerous situations because of someone who has done something to us. And I'm not saying that we need to go back to that situation again. But we do need to forgive completely. We need to let that go. And someone said, you know, not forgiving someone else is like taking poison expecting the other guy to die. Forgiving another person is something that we also give as a gift to ourselves. It helps us to have a clean heart before God, and it helps us to be able to move beyond forgiveness and pray for act of blessing in other people's lives. Can you imagine someone who's done something wrong to you personally? God forgives that stinking person and blesses them. And we say, amen. That's what we want. We want to see that take place in that person's life. We want life transformation. We want blessing. We want them to be able to have the gift of repentance that leads to life. And this is conditional. We can't really move forward very well until we have let go of what someone else owes us. Uh, Last piece here in this prayer. uh, Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from the evil one. It might seem strange that uh, Jesus exhorts us to pray that God will not lead us into temptation, and uh, D.A. Carson identifies this statement as litotes. You know litotes, right? Yeah, I don't either. Um, it's a figure of speech that expresses something by nav- uh, negating the contrary. For example, in English, the phrase not a few means many. In other words, what he's saying here is uh, lead us not into temptation is uh, the same as deliver us from the evil one. These are sort of parallel pieces here. And so the idea is this. We want to be delivered from temptation. We don't want to be stuck um, in a spot where we're uh, playing in our mind with things of idolatry, things that are competing with God or things that are uh, going to draw us away from him. And we don't want other people to be in that spot either. What we need to pray for is the rescue, the deliverance. What God is doing in the whole world so that people will worship him is the rescue. It's the deliverance from temptation to rebel against him, to go the other way. Instead, we pray for the rescue. God, let everyone seek you and be forgiven so that they can be rescued into a position of worshiping you and living as you have called them to be. So this is the, the, uh, the structure of the Lord's Prayer, and I hope you'll take this to heart. It's sort of a, a how-to. There are other structures in how to pray. It's not the only one, but Jesus' disciples wanted instruction on prayer. This particular one was, showed up in, in the Gospel of Matthew uh, and in the Sermon on the Mount and talking about the, the norms of the kingdom, what, what the kingdom of God is like, and so it, it's in that context. But there's another similar one in Luke where Jesus' disciples said, uh, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, here you go. Here's a good structure for your prayer life. Don't babble before God. Don't play at praying. Pray on behalf of God's name. Pray for it to be held up as holy and revered. Pray for the kingdom. Pray for your daily bread today. Pray for forgiveness and pray for the rescue. Pray now. Pray hard. Here's a structure on how you can do it. Well, I want to give us um, a few action steps that we can take as we head out today, because if we're going to bless other people, we need to be, we need to be um, equipped. We need to be motivated. I hope that you're motivated to, to if, you're, if, if prayer is something you've been struggling with, I hope you're motivated to do this. Go practice this every single day. Go out and practice the structure of the Lord's Prayer. It doesn't need to be many words. Remember that? Don't babble on and on. It can be short. Uh, it can be long. But it needs to be heartfelt and direct. It's not for show. It's for your relationship with God. And it's on behalf of other people. So if we can move on one more here. Um, if you're looking for, now some people say, well, I, I, um, I struggle to, to pr- pray for other people, and I also struggle to know someone that I can um, share with about Jesus. And we'll talk more about sharing about Jesus in the future, but if you were to take your house, that yellow square, and if you were to look at the houses around you, Do you know the names of all your neighbors? Do you know anything about them? I bet you know some of them. Don't know if we know all of them. I only ask, I mean, do you like all of them? But what if we took a little grid and said, these are the houses, and it, you know, maybe it doesn't look like that on your map, but these are the houses around me. I'm going to make sure I know the names of my neighbors and start praying for them by name today. And I'm going to write down some folks in my family. I, you know, I, I, uh, I prayed for my dad for years and years and years and, uh, to the point where I, I really didn't believe anything would happen in his life um, that, that he would come to know Jesus. 
Well, at the ripe old age of 72, he, he came to know the Lord. That was a lot of prayer. There was a lot of waiting for, on, my, on my side. You might have someone in your family like that too that you just uh, you almost don't believe it anymore that anything could happen, but it can. So uh, let's go one more forward here. Uh, so here's what I'd like you to do. First of all, find a blessed buddy. Could be a uh, husband or wife, could be a child or parent, could be you know, your neighbor, could be anybody. Find someone that you'll just kind of be in contact with, be connected with, and, wa- and, and, um, and wanting to bless other people. So find someone who will kind of be in this with you, who's, who's all in. And, um, and there, we have some groups uh, going on right now, um, and, and some of them are in the bulletin, uh, so you can, you can join a, a blessed group if you want. But find a blessed buddy. It can be an informal thing. And, um, and go through this together with them. And first of all, bless God. Remember, blessing God is thanking him and praising him. We can do that in prayer. God, hallowed be your name. And here are all the things that I'm thankful for for you because that helps me to be thankful and praise God, honors God, and also helps me to trust God for the future. And then bless people. So this could be, you know, making your little map out and praying for your neighbors. It could be prayer walking through a neighborhood. It could be being more intentional at work. It could be uh, remembering to pray for your family that you haven't prayed for in a long time. And it could be praying for your enemies. People, you know, there's someone that I need to forgive. I, got, I don't even, I don't know how I can bless them. I can't even forgive them. But uh, it could be just starting that process. But this is the starting point. If we want to know where to go from here, we've got to start with prayer. We need to start praying to God for our own hearts and on behalf of other people. I wrote this um, sort of to, uh, as a landing spot for us. Jesus taught us to pray. The kingdom of God begins with a name of infinite power and disputable fame. Holy, righteous, and faithful is he. May his great kingdom be all that we see. We'll trust him for bread and we'll let debtors go since we know he provides and forgives and so we'll pray for the rescue and strength to stand trusting all that comes is from his hand. Please bow your heads with me. Uh, Father, We need you more than anything. You are truly the source of all blessing. And your name is very great. Teach us to pray. Teach us to love you more than we ever have before in our lives. Teach us to love other people, whether they deserve it or not, because you've called us to. And Father, this week, as we, as we think about these things, help us to be faithful in prayer. Help us to encourage one another in prayer. And God, in all these things, may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are going to continue our time of worship with the Lord's Supper. And uh, it is always my delight to take the Lord's Supper after sharing a message because uh, maybe I've sinned or done something wrong as I've been speaking to you now, and, and now I get to just remember that everything is washed by the blood of Jesus. And um, Maybe you've sinned and done something wrong or something that you need forgiveness, or maybe you need to forgive that person that came to your mind as I was speaking earlier. Um, this is a wonderful time for the Holy Spirit to meet with each of us. And uh, so... Uh, This table is open to all who put their faith in Jesus. Uh, It's uh, it's something that we shouldn't take, though, if we are not a Christ follower. It's something we shouldn't take if we're not able to forgive somebody because then we take condemnation onto ourselves. So let me encourage you to take this time of silence. If somebody uh, comes to mind that you need to forgive, forgive them. Or just pray to God that you will. Or uh, perhaps you'd never give your life to Jesus. This is a great time to do that. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I want you to be 
over all things in my life, and I don't want to follow my own way anymore. And then partake with us. And if not, just let, let, uh, let this, um, perhaps partake with us this, this next week. I'm going to pray for all of us, and then there'll be a time of silence where you can add your own prayers in, uh, and then we'll, we'll all partake at one time. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the gift that Jesus gave us. That Jesus is the rescue. There is no rescue without Jesus. And there's no kingdom here on earth without Jesus. There's no redeemed people without Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. And whoever believes in him will have eternal life. And so now we remember the gift of Jesus and this bread representing his body broken for us, the blood shed for us. And after Jesus ascended into heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would meet with us now, Lord. Encouraging, convicting, leading, whatever it is that each of us needs. Meet with us now in the name of Jesus. Please take this time to add your own prayer. In one sense, we could say Jesus is our daily bread. We need him daily, and he gave of himself so that we can have life. Let's eat in remembrance of him. Jesus also said his blood is the cup of the new covenant. That because of what Jesus did, we have a, a new covenant with God. And we participate in sharing that covenant with others. Let's take and drink in remembrance of Christ. Father, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the hope that we have in Christ. Thank you that we are fully redeemed when we trust in Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Cabot. As we conclude our service, let's stand together and sing our closing song. How marvelous. I stand amazed at your presence. In the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me A sinner condemned unclean Singing how marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall end
crowned in glory, His face I at last shall see. T'will be my joy through the ages to sing of His love for me. Singing how marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall end. Once again, if you're a visitor, I'd like to remind you that we have a Meet Life Spring afterwards. It's a lunch uh, that uh, we'll just, just informal lunch. You can ask questions and learn more about Life Spring Community Church. We can hang out for a little bit. Uh, it'll be in the room off to your left as you walk out the hallway. Um, and uh, I'd like to uh, send us off with uh, a word from the Lord. Uh, pray now, pray hard, and with Jesus' words, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. God bless you. Go in peace.